It's time for the next free video from IT Free Training for the Active Directory Free Training Course. In this video, I will look at keeping time in your domain up to date and accurate. All computers have a BIOS in them with a battery backup. The battery ensures the computer's internal clock keeps time even when the computer is shut down and not plugged in. Due to a number of reasons, the time on a computer may drift from the correct time. Kerberos and other authentication systems will not work if the time on the local computer is too different from the time on the other computer. If you attempt to log into a domain and the time on your local computer is too different from the time on the domain controller, you will not be able to log in. For this reason, it is important to keep the time on all the computers on your network up to date. To keep time accurate in the domain, Microsoft uses a hierarchy method of time syncing. The root of hierarchy is the domain controller with the PDC emulator operational master role. Under this, you have your domain controllers. All the domain controllers in your domain will sync their time from the PDC emulator. The clients on the network, and this includes member servers, will sync their time to the closest domain controller. If the domain controller holding the PDC emulator role is down for an extended time period, this can cause your client computer times to drift. Since the PDC emulator plays such an important role in time synchronization, it is important to try to keep the time on this domain controller as up to date as possible. If your company has the money, they may consider installing a hardware clock in the PDC emulator. These clocks are more accurate than the clock found in the computer. In most cases, a company will choose to sync the PDC emulator internal clock from an external time source. This is generally the preferred method because it will keep your clocks accurate and costs nothing in additional hardware. If your network does not have internet access, for example, it is a secure network, you may have no choice but to install a hardware clock in your PDC emulator to ensure the time stays accurate. If you have a multi-domain environment, you will have one PDC emulator per domain. In this case, it is recommended that the child domain's PDC emulators are configured to sync their time from any domain controller in the root domain. The choice of domain controller can also be the PDC emulator in the root domain if you so choose. If you decide to configure an external time source, you need to understand a little terminology on how external time sources work. External time sources use a hierarchy with each level of the hierarchy called a stratum. At the top of the hierarchy, or stratum zero, are very reliable clocks. These are hardware atomic clocks, GPS clocks, and radio clocks. Stratum zero clocks are corrected directly to stratum one, Stratum 1 are computers that generally act as time source for the next level, Stratum 2. In some cases, Stratum 1 clocks and Stratum 2 clocks will have restricted access while others are open to the public. This brings up the point, would you use Stratum 1 or Stratum 2 to sync your clocks if given the choice? There are more Stratum 2 clocks than Stratum 1 clocks available to the public. It is best, when choosing a time source, to choose one that is near you. Syncing your server with a time server on the other side of the world is silly if there is a closer one to you, even if the other time source is considered more accurate. You may even have a time clock closer to you that is stratum 3 in the time hierarchy. The important thing to remember is to ensure that you are keeping your time accurate from a trusted, accurate location. Microsoft does not keep a list of the external time sources. However, if you refer to KP document 262680, this document contains links to lists of external time sources you can use. Once you have worked out which time server you want to use, you can change Windows to use that time server. I will now change to my Windows Server 2008 PDC emulator to show you how to do that. 
From my Windows 2008 server, I will first open Internet Explorer and open KB282680. Microsoft does not keep a list of external time servers, but this page does have a link to another website that does. About halfway down the article, you can see the link for Stratum 1 time servers, and below that, the link to Stratum 2 time servers. In my case, I will select the link to Stratum 2 websites. This list has a time server that is very close to where I am. Due to the ever-increasing load on Stratum 1 time servers, they ask that you use Stratum 2 servers where possible, as there are more of them and there is generally less load on them. When I select the link, I get an error with the site's certificate. It was not issued by a trusted authority, which essentially means the page cannot be verified as being from that site. It is up to you if you understand the risks and want to continue. On the website, it is a matter of selecting a time server that is close to you. In my case, my ISP has a time server, so I will select this one. Be sure that you check the access is Open Access. If it is listed as Restricted Access, you will not be able to use it. Now that I have the time server that I want to use, I need to configure Windows Server 2008 to use it. To do this, open a command prompt. From the command prompt, run the command W32TM. This is used to configure the Windows Time Service. The first parameter you want to add is slash config to indicate you want to make configuration changes. After this, you need to add the time server here. This is done with the parameter slash manual peer list colon and then the time server. I will only add one time server here, but for redundancy, you could always add multiple time servers if you wanted to. The next parameter is slash sync from flags colon manual. This tells the time server to use the manual entry that has been put in. By default, Windows will attempt to sync with the domain. You need at least one computer to sync its time for an external time source. You could configure all your computers to sync off an external time source by using this command, but this is considered to be bad time server etiquette. In most organizations, having one or two servers syncing off an external time source is enough to keep your organization time in sync. The second server is usually a domain controller that is the standby PC emulator in case the first one needs to go offline for an extended period. The next parameter, slash reliable colon yes, tells Windows to consider this external time server as a reliable time server whose time is accurate. The last parameter, slash update, tells the Windows time server to attempt to update its time from this server right away. Once you launch the command, Windows will start syncing off its external time server and update its time from the server immediately. If you want to ensure the process worked correctly, open the Event Viewer and check for any time-related errors. That's it for configuring an external time server. In the next video, I will look at domain function levels. The domain function levels determine what features are available in your domain. The higher the domain function level, the more features. The downside is that older operating systems, such as Windows 2000 and 2003, will not be able to be used as domain controllers depending on how high you set the domain function level. This is only one of the free videos for the 7640 course provided by IT Free Training. For the rest of the course, please see our webpage or YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.